gentlemen, welcome to this fine winter eventide. Scrapping with the better three carters. I always get the last word, mind. Yes, dear. I've unearthed some arcana working through the layers, cleaning up here in the shop. Behold, the Cockford Ollie. Torque struck domatic. Waiting a bit of a salty patina to her. But enough about baby doll. What I found over yonder. Oh, I'm stuck on my microphone here. Yeah. Bear with me, bear with me. Artistic cinematographic shots. Over here in the green toolbox storage area. It's all color corded. Mind, except for that brown one in the middle. Behold. A Skidmore Wilhelm. Just below the topsoil. My old metric clock. Never seen one of them. Goes by base 10. Ah, watch glasses. Mana mana. Son of a diddly. Looking for those the other day. You know it's good when it comes in a British racing green metal toolbox. Ah. Oh, and she's got some gravity to her, too. Huh? This thing, all of oh, five grand, I bet you. That's Yankee Green Bucks, Kentucky Stan Kopex, I bet you. Be Ten grand. Although, the state of the world and the Brandon Bucks being printed in the basement there, the Fed, might be even more than that. Skidmore Wilhelm, Green Road, Cleveland, Ohio, Model M. What we have here is a bolt tension calibrator. All things being equal, that is the coefficient of friction on the threads, the bolt tension is directly proportional to the input torque. That is, if you graft it out on the X and Y bolt tension versus torque, it would be directly proportional a straight line as we know there is nothing plumb and square in all of nature so there's going to be some fuckery around that but this is the tool what people who design impact wrenches use to measure the output torque this didn't come by chance by way of dildo newfoundland nay it came the other side it came from the universitad of Institute of Technology on account of some professor got tired of uh, trying to teach the master's student how to run the lab and it got put on the government auction site. Old Justine Trudeau sold this to me fair and square for a song. Now there's other fellas on the YouTubes what used to have one of these devices with the electronicals. It was Honest Abe's non-shill tool reviews. <laughs> And then as soon as uh, he stopped getting paid, uh, lo and behold, the channel dried up. Interesting how that works. I ain't saying, I'm just saying. But there's also some young fellas what built their own one of these, and it is a torque test channel. And those guys are fair dinkum. They do a fair test, and it'll be interesting to experiment with this to see if we can get the same results. Of course, experimentally, if you cannot get the same results with your sciencing, then the experiment was a failure. If you cannot replicate the results, your experiment was a failure. But I would be surprised if we got the same kind of numbers with this device as with the other device, because all of the tool manufacturers use this device in order to rate their breakaway torques and their full torques and all that kind of torques. So the tool is optimized to get the best numbers out of this system. And of course, if you change the fastener, if you change anything in here, it changes the harmonics and the resonance of the entire system. I don't know if you've listened to an impact gun, but there is a harmonic there. There's a resonance there, and that will affect the results, which we will see. As I say, fair bit of gravity to her, huh? Oh, oh yeah, I thought I was going to have to reenact my wedding night there. 
a little too girthy story of my life, but she slid right in. Eh. What we have in here is a big hydraulic cylinder, and as we torque up this nut, it squozes the hydraulic fluid, which may be a grease, and causes the, holy fuck. Hopefully, well, we might need to do some repairs. Hopefully, causes the needle to move. Hmm. So that is a fine thread, uh, one inch, three, no, seven, eight, no, that's, yeah, that's one inch. So that'd be 12 threads per inch. I bet you uh, we're looking at 700 foot pounds required. Of course, the bolt, the tension on the bolt itself, a clamping load of something like 40,000 pounds, which uh, you take the clamping load by the effective area or the cross-sectional area you're probably looking at something like 75,000 uh, PSI through that bolt just at its regular clamping load. So that should show on here when it's up at 700 pounds, it should show right around 7,500. I don't know. Well, there's a one inch bolt there at 51, but I think that's probably coarse thread if you have a look at that scale there. does have some additional data. One inch bolt sort of in the middle, right around the 50,000. Let's stick an impact gun on her, see if we can't get the thing chooch an inch, uh, that'd be about an inch and a half socket. Rattle that around. I think we'll be okay, there's a, no leaks up in here. It looks like it hasn't been used all that much, still got the paint on the nut. An inch and seven. Ah, keep looking. What are the odds? I was right the first time. That never happens. If you're the least bit squeamish, I urge you to look away. Engage your safety squints. We have a half inch drive, inch and a half chrome socket. Let he who is without gin cast the first groan. Really, who has a half inch drive? Yeah, you know, at least I got it. Yeah. We're gonna use the most ubiquitous torque instrument of all. The seat of your pants. <laughs> when you rip your slacks, you know she's good. Oh yeah. That one's like a German virgin. I said the <laughs> horse before the cart, punchline before the punchline. Yeah. She's good and toy. They even got a proper part stack up, what for showing us how the thing chooches. You see, huh? We got the gauge, and we have a little movable pistone, a couple of O-rings. In here is the oil. Bolt goes through here, clamps it together, squeezes out the oil into the gauge. Whoop, Bob's your auntie. Now for what we're doing, testing small impact guns, we're gonna be around this zone. So I ask you now, should I change this gauge just into pressure? Correlate that to torque. Should I keep this gauge? You know, that way there's some better granularity. The scale is better in the zone that we're going to use. Uh, let's back that off. Also, we need to confirm that it's reasonably well calibrated. What we'll have to do, I think, the best option is to get a long bar and some heavy weights. Measure the length of the bar. Measure the mass of the weights and then we know how much torque is on it. There's the torque wrench at 150 foot-pounds. We're running at 
6,000 PSI. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be down on the lower end of the scale, of course, the linearity. Oh, shit. Of course, the linearity at the low end of the scale is going to be atrocious. So if you would, spare a thought about how we're going to do this. I think we got to change the gauge because it's just, we're too far, we're too low on the scale to really see any appreciable difference. Oh, for frog snacks. <laughs> Apparently it's a little cold here in the Empire Dirt. Son of a... Snap on junk. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice.